Its venom has been called the most expensive liquid in the world and one of the deadliest. So does the Deathstalker live up to the international hype? Or is he just another victim of popular exaggeration? Find out today on Laugh Pack. Many animals in the world have inspired superheroes. Panthers, bats, and even wolverines have superhero counterparts. Yeah, and wolverines are really mean. But there is only one creature that has seemed to inspire nothing but villains. And that is the Scorpion. There's the villain from Spider-Man, Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Get over here! And the dude from the Mummy franchise. He was a real one and badly animated. Now believe me when I say there is a good reason these little crawlers have such a negative image. Scorpion stings are a major public health problem in many underdeveloped tropical and subtropical countries. Hello. Including parts of Africa, South India, the Middle East, Mexico, and South Latin America. The estimated number of people who are being stung by scorpions is 1.2 million, leading to 3,250 deaths a year. And that, my friends, is very high. How high, you ask? Well, let's put it this way. For every person killed by a venomous snake, there are 10 people who die by venomous scorpions. And the scorpion responsible for most of these fatalities is none other than the Deathstalker Scorpion. I mean, let's face it, this arachnid wasn't given the name Deathstalker just because it sounds cool. Deathstalker. Death it's because one sting from this little beast, untreated, could put you down for good. So how potent is their venom? Why do scientists want to find more of it so badly and if scientists could get their hands on more of this deadly, expensive liquid, how much would it cost them? Let's find out with some feature facts! Oh yeah! Feature facts. Size. These scorpions have a flattened, elongated body. And they have no problem hiding in even the smallest of cracks. It has four pairs of legs, a pair of claws, and a segmented tail that has a venomous spike at its tip. And when it comes to size, these creepy crawlies are not the biggest scorpions out there. Their full length usually averages out around 2.3 inches long with their tail making up about half of that length. But don't let that fool ya, these little guys pack a big punch. Location. Would a scorpion by any other name be just as venomous? That's a little remix Shakespeare for ya. Oh boy, everyone's a poet. But yes, this scorpion does have several names. The Deathstalker is also known as a Palestine Yellow Scorpion, Israelite Desert Scorpion, Alm Derman Scorpion, and my favorite tongue twister, the Leoris Quinquestriatus. What the deuce? The Leoris Quinquestriatus. Gesundheit. The Leoris Quinquestriatus. God bless you! Say that three times fast. And if scorpions freak you out just as much as spiders do, well, there's a good reason for that, because scorpions belong to the arachnid family. Oh yeah, they're related to spiders. Can someone please tell him that? Ah, oh, but deathstalkers are a very popular species of scorpion that are found in dry desert locations. And although they seem like they like it high and dry, these scorpions would prefer something with a little more humidity and tend to live longer when they're found in such places. It's joke time! Hmm. It's joke time! Joke number one. 
What did the scorpion say when he found water in three different places in the desert? Well, well, well. Get it? Well, as in where you get water from? Joke number two. Why do scorpions like reading big books? Because they like long tails. Hey -o! Like every other scorpion, death stalkers are nocturnal hunters and usually consume centipedes, earthworms, spiders, nope. crickets, and other scorpions. And just like the bull shark we covered a few episodes back in last season, these death stalkers aren't afraid to eat other death stalkers. Uh, oh, you got me. Uh, I'm going over. I'm going over. Wait a minute, Todd. You sure you're not faking it? Hello? If you don't get up, I'm gonna eat you. Well, I warned him. These scorpions are rarely known to drink water. The way these little critters stay hydrated is by absorbing the liquid found in their prey's body. Oh, huh, that's weird. After that big meal, I'm not even thirsty. Now, when it comes to spiders as a food source, not even the dreaded Black Widow spider would be off limits. There were tests done where they took one Death Stalker scorpion and placed it in the same cage as one Black Widow spider. And they did this 10 different times using a new scorpion and a new spider every time. Now, out of these 10 different matches, the Death Stalker scorpion ended up winning eight of those battles. Ah, uh, victory never tasted so, um, Black widow -y. Then, um... Well, apparently the viral claims that the Death Stalker Scorpion is the most deadly and dangerous scorpion out there seem to be true. The Death Stalker Scorpion is very dangerous because its venom is a potent mixture of neurotoxins, which can lead to immense and unbearable pain. Getting injected with this venom from just one strike of the scorpion can cause coma, fever, paralysis, convulsions, and even death. Now I know what some of you are thinking, how can I tell how strong a scorpion's venom's gonna be? Well, that's easy, by looking at the pincers. The stronger and the larger those giant claws are on the front of that scorpion, the less powerful the venom's gonna be, which is good and bad, because that means the opposite is true. The weaker and smaller the pincers, the more lethal and possibly deadly the venom is. Now, I don't know if you've taken a good look at the Death Stalker's pincers, but, uh, not very big. Mm -mm. Now, when it comes to pain, one scientist I found online described the sting of a Death Stalker scorpion being 100 times worse than a bee sting. Now, <laughs> that's an ouchie. These specific scorpions are very aggressive and extremely antisocial by nature. And they tend to become very nervous very quickly if cornered or kept in captivity. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? Oh man, you're making me nervous. <sighs> I'm out of here. Glow. All right, Manny, I said, whoa. Okay, this one would have helped in the dragon episode where we covered dragons. What's going on here? Hey, Professor, we thought it would be cool to add lights to the lab. What do you think? Well, it looks pretty good. All we need now is some glowing Death Stalker scorpions. What? Scorpions glow? Oh, you bet your LED lights they do. Here, Manny, let me show you something. The reason scorpions glow in ultraviolet light 
is because certain molecules in a scorpion's exoskeleton absorb the longer wavelengths of ultraviolet light. They then emit this light in different wavelengths that are visible at night as a blue-green glow. Several theories have been made about the usefulness of this ghostly glow. But a study in 2011 found that the fluorescence seemed to help scorpions detect and avoid ultraviolet light. Scorpions were tested by shining ultraviolet and blue-green light on them when their eyes were unblocked and again when their eyes were blocked. Now, they obviously wanted to avoid the ultraviolet light when their eyes were not covered. But what was really surprising is that they had an even stronger avoidance when their eyes were completely blocked and they couldn't see. This suggested that scorpions use their whole bodies as light detection devices, converting ultraviolet light to the blue-green glow and transmitting this signal to the nervous system. In simple terms, when light hits a scorpion and it causes the scorpion's body to glow, it sends a signal to their nervous system telling them they better skedaddle out of there and hide somewhere else. Okay, that's it. I'm out of here. So there you go. A scorpion can glow. And their whole body can detect light, which helps them hide better at night. What? That's so cool. I have to tell somebody. <laughs> hey, Kyla, did you know scorpions glow? Young. Female death stalkers are larger in size than their male counterparts. And that's because it helps them to accomplish their reproductive tasks. Now, to be fair, little is known about the reproductive behavior of a death stalker. But what we do know is that after a gestation period of 122 to 277 days, females will give birth from 35 all the way up to 87 little creepy crawly baby scorpions, known as scorplings. Now, after these babies are born, they will crawl up onto mommy's back and stay there until about their second molting. And seeing how their first molting occurs about two weeks after they're born, these babies are going to be on their mama's back for a bit. But not too long, I hope, because they got to get out into the world and live their fullest life, which is anywhere from two to six years. Okay, why does it feel like I keep going in circles? I know I've seen that freckle before. Crazy! Crazy! It's time for something crazy! Here's something crazy! This doctor's venom may completely change how cancer surgery is done. Scientists discovered that when injected into a patient's bloodstream, Scorpion venom will stick to cancer cells, but not to normal cells. But don't worry, because I removed the poisonous part of the venom first. Now combine this sticky venom molecule with fluorescent dye, and you got what scientists call tumor paint. This tumor paint will make it very easy to see the difference between brain cancer and normal tissue. Check out this image of a cancerous tumor. All you need to do is inject a little tumor paint and bada bing bada boom, the tumor lights up, which makes it easy for the doctor to see and then remove. And it's all thanks to some deadly venom. Oh, thank you. Oh, stop. No, you're embarrassing me. No, it's the least I can do. Price. Now, there are some reasons why it is so difficult for someone to get their hands on some death stalker venom. For starters, it costs a little bit of cash. Oh, you know, just around the ballpark of about $39 million per gallon. Yeah, you heard me. Now, even if by some miracle you have $39 million lying around, you can't just go buy a bunch of death stalker venom. They only sell this deadly liquid in very small increments. Where $130 can get you a tiny little droplet about the size of a grain of sugar. 
What? Why is it so expensive, you ask? Well, one huge reason is because of the breakthrough that this Venom provides to the medical community that Trinity brought up. But another reason is because it would take forever to collect. Now, the way that this liquid is gathered is usually by hand. One scorpion at a time. Which makes collecting this liquid even harder because one scorpion at the very most only produces about two milligrams of venom a shot. So let's do the math. You would have to milk a scorpion 2.64 million times in order to fill that $39 million gallon. And I mean, let's face it, you're probably gonna get stung along the way. And that was the Deathstalker Scorpion. Who knew such a little guy could pack such a big sting? But those big stings have tons of useful components that are helping Pioneer break through medicines. Not only does this venom help find different cancers, but it has also been used to eliminate malaria in mosquitoes. Yep, and it's used to fight bone disease in rats, which scientists believe could work on people too. And this is all just the beginning of what could be done with this venom. And the more they research, the more lethals they found. <laughs> Which is why, again, it is so expensive. Well, this brings us to the end of another episode. I'll let it crawl itself away into the creature file pile. All right, I'm going, I'm going. If you like this show, then make sure to hit subscribe. Don't forget to smash that like button. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time on Laugh Talk. <laughs>